Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. We're so glad you're here this morning. We've got a great show lined up, and we'll get started, as always, with our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center right there at the corner of Baldwin and Highway 77. Run by and check out all the programs they got. One of the finest programs of welding you'll find anywhere in the state of Florida. It's right there, uh, right there at the Haney. I've been in there and watched them weld and all. They learned a lot. I've had kids in my class take that welding class, and the nursing program is right there with them, too. So all kind of stuff out there. Run by and check it out. High today, 72, low 58. Water temperature staying right at 58 degrees. We talked about this flat line for like almost 30 straight days now, right at that same degrees. But uh, with this uh, sun moving up a little bit, it's going to start going uh, going up a little bit. Don't forget now, this Sunday, you need to change your clock. You've got to spring forward on this Sunday. So we'll be talking about it again on Friday to remind you because it's outdoors when you certainly don't want to sleep late and you don't want to go to church uh, late either. Don't be late for church. All right, we'll take a look at our river readings. That place go blunts down. It did start going down yesterday, and it's continuing going down. It's still, though, it's still high. It's at a 12.7 this morning. And if you're going to fish this weekend, it's still going to be up there in double digits. If you want to fish uh, down there at Howard Creek or something, you're still going to be around 11 foot down there. Now, the Choctahatchee at Carryville, it's dropping out too, but it's, been a, it's a little bit slow of a drop. And looking on Thursday and Friday, Right now it's reading at right at 9.6, but if you're going to fish, say, Saturday morning, you're going to be fishing, it looks like around 7 foot, and a slow drop to it. So we're in pretty, pretty decent shape there. All right, tide chart, uh, taking a look at it, brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home and Cemetery. And like I said before, you get those tide charts down at C&Z Sporting Goods. They are really, uh, they're really handy. Uh, take a look at today's tide. Today is March the 4th. And we're looking at a, a neat, we're about to get in some neat tide, folks, for uh, four or five days in a row now. We have a low tide at 512 and a high tide at 856. Not a lot of movement, but it is slow incoming tide. Our best tides we're going to have is going to be next weekend. So if you plan to do any really strong fishing in the bay system, the best tides will be next weekend, not this weekend. But don't let that stop you from going if you want to go. All right, uh, the marine forecast, south, southeast at about 10 today. All right, take a break and be right back. Hi, welcome back, folks, and welcome, Ronnie Groom. Good morning, buddy. Good to see you. Yes, sir. We, we uh, always enjoy having Ronnie on. I get a lot of compliments uh, every time after the next couple of days after you've been on. Our people call and say, hey, enjoy Ronnie talking about this and that. So uh, we appreciate you coming on. Oh, I enjoy doing it. Well, look at here. I, everybody's talking about turkeys uh, hunting. I had a guy come to my house late yesterday afternoon. Uh, getting, when he's getting out of the car in the driveway, he started talking about ke uh, uh, not catching fish but shooting turkeys. It's coming right on. It's right here on us, you know. Uh, the 14th and 15th they have a youth hunt mm -hmm. and then uh, the 21st uh, the regular season opens so everybody's excited about it. Well I know uh, you talking before you come on right, you were so excited because this year you're going to have a first time ever a turkey uh, a contest. Right. Uh, so we're going to have a contest for the for the for the best turkey and uh, uh, all you got to do is just uh, bring the turkey in but you have to bring a picture in with it. You want to get some good pictures so that's all right. it costs to enter. It's when you uh, bring your turkey in to uh, let us measure it. And the way we're going to do it, we're going to measure uh, the beard and the spurs and total that up, and that'll determine who has the best bird. Okay, just measure the beard and then and just add that and up. And the spurs, and bring him in, and you can bring him in to, uh, to uh, C&G Sporting Goods or to uh, Phil's place out there, Critter Creation. Oh, okay, good deal. Took either place. And, and here it is, a first place winner is going to get a free mount? Wow. Yeah. We've got a guy that's really a great uh, taxidermist, Tim Owens, that's going to do a free turkey mount. And you know, if you've ever had a turkey mount, that's an expensive mount. So we're <laughs> yeah. going to have a we're going to have a free mount, and we got a couple gift certificates at C and G Sporting Goods. And uh, we just encourage everybody to enter. It doesn't cost you anything but a picture. And uh, <clears throat> uh, down at the bottom, you see down there, it says the turkeys must be taken by in Bay, Calhoun, Gulf, Washington. Holmes, Liberty, Franklin, Jackson counties. Okay, that's our viewing area, right? That's there. our viewing uh -huh. area, and uh, they must be shot with a shotgun, bow, or crossbow. Okay, yeah, you're right. One of those turkey mounts between four and five hundred dollars a full mount is. They are that? expensive, and he wow. is, he did one for my son, and it's just beautiful. I tell you, uh, Tim does a great job, and I really, 
uh, encourage everybody to get in on this thing. So it don't cost anything. All you got to do is just bring a picture. Yes, bring it. You can't beat that. We'd like to have a good picture we can show people, you yeah. know, what goes on around here. Yeah. And uh, we just encourage you to enter, and, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun. You know, if you're a turkey hunter, uh, you, you realize what how much excitement is generated. If, and if you just think you might be interested, you ought to try it. It's a great sport. It's uh, it's like any other type of hunting. It'll get in your blood. You know, you talk about, you know, Kobe fishermen get excited and pompano fishermen get excited and snapper and then deer hunters and everything. But I don't think, you and I were talking, I don't think there's a group of hunters get more, or outdoors and get more excited about their uh, thing than, than the turkey hunters. Boy, that, they hear those get, turkeys gobble is just, it's, it's like hearing an elk bugle, man. Uh, it'll make the skin crawl on the back of your neck. I, I mean, they're just uh, they're talking. You see, they just, the voice gets excited. They just start looking around. And, I mean, I'm serious. I get around them, and I just, it's contagious, and uh, it, that's, that's really good. So You know, this youth hunt's coming up uh, March 14th and 15th, mm -hmm. and this is fairly new. I think we had it last year. Mm -hmm. But I really encourage you to take the youth out. Take them, take them out in the woods hunting or fishing. And remember, it's not... It's not what you kill or catch that really counts. It's the trip that counts. Mm -hmm. You know, we go down to Wee Wall down to that, that old grocery store down there and have breakfast and uh, mm -hmm. we throw rocks in the river and, uh, you know, just have a good time. You don't have to shoot or kill something. And right now, when you get out in the woods, it's amazing the beauty you see, all the flowers oh, blooming, man. the trees blooming, and it's just... It's an experience. The kids need to do something besides sitting around mashing on some little gadget. We talk about that all the time, but it, and I see it so much. With my, and I say it over and over again about my class. When they come out of those classrooms and come down the outdoors, and they, they just want to get out. They asked me uh, yesterday, Coach, can we just go outside? Yeah. And they just, kids yeah. love to go outside, and and we we overlook that sometimes, and we cram up so much stuff in them. They got to do this, got to do that. But well, goodness sake, let them get outside. I've always taken my kids and grandkids, and I still do, yeah. take them out in the woods. You know, let them shoot a pellet gun or a uh -huh. twenty-two rifle and, and learn to keep the woods clean and learn to appreciate that and, and realize what life's all about. Mm -hmm. It's not just in the city. Now, you're, you're talking to a, a guy who's been around all his life, and you've seen people come and go, young people come and go, turn into adults mm -hmm. with their young people, and you've seen the benefits of it. Oh, yeah, it's just... Yeah. Tremendous. There's so much good time can be had in the outdoors. Yeah, yeah. even and if you can you take them a picnic or something, or you, can go to, you can go to state parks and all and have a picnic and just let them yeah. walk through the woods. Right. It's a real state park, St. Andrews State Park, just walking in the woods. There's a lot of life kids nowadays aren't exposed yeah. to. They need to get out. And really, honestly, the springtime is the ideal time to do it right now because in July it's going to be almost too hot to be miserable. And then, of course, this past winter it's just too cold to get out there. But springtime is a beautiful time to get out there. That's right. Okay. Look, we're going to take a quick break and come back with all this stuff here and show you how to get a turkey. Hi, welcome back. See here, Ronnie Groom, CNG Sporting Goods. All you folks know him and all get a chance for another Harrison, all the way into Harrison Avenue. But we uh, first we we're in the first week of March, and in March always talks about a lot of things, but turkeys. So what? How are we gonna get them, Ronnie? Well, <clears throat> you know, turkey hunting is a great sport, and you don't have to be a great hunter to turkey hunt. To use these calls, you don't have to be an expert. It's pretty simple, and uh, turkeys are not a real bright bird. They can see you a mile off. Mm -hmm. But they're not real bright, and they're fairly easy to call in. Uh, uh, but it, it's something you need to practice. If you want to get into turkey hunting, come by, and we'll be glad to help you get into it. But let's go over a few things that you need if you're going to turkey hunt. The first thing that I have to have, the number one thing, <laughs> yeah. is this thing to keep mosquitoes off, this thermocell. Mm -hmm. Now, all you do is it's got a little vial in here with some fluid in it and a, a little pad up here mm -hmm. that's got a repellent in it. You just mash a button, it clicks on. And, and an area for around 15 feet around you will be free of mosquitoes. Now, mm -hmm. when these things first came out, I laughed at it. I said, that's a joke. It mm -hmm. works. Mm -hmm. It works so well that I carry one in my uh, turkey vest all the time, and I carry a spare in my truck just in case I run out of fluid or, or I lose this thing. But I, I can, uh, that's I can, number one. I can attest to that, too. They, they flat out work. They I'm work. like you. I'm always skeptic of stuff, new yeah. stuff coming out because a lot of junk comes out. But this, this is really, this works. I like it. I had a, I've got a good friend that's a salesman. He's, he's the main salesman for these things for hunting. Mm -hmm. And he made enough money in the last few years to buy 25 acres on a river in Georgia. Good for him. Yeah, just selling just these. Just selling those. Good that tells for him. you how, how, how well they work. Yeah. All right, let's go over some of these other things. Uh, first thing is camouflage. You got to camouflage yourself completely. You got to have, you got to have gloves. Uh, you got to have a hood. 
Now this is a sort of a, a better hood here. It covers and it's leafy. Mm -hmm. It gives you a lot of coverage. Mm -hmm. But most people just use a, a plain little hood like this and you got a cap that goes on the top of that. So mm -hmm. you got to get camouflage or they'll see you. You got it. And your gloves too. You want your, you want your hands. Right. Your, every little movement. They're going every, yeah, anything that's wide. The gloves, you notice, are longer and they mm -hmm. come up and cover your wrist too so that. That's a good point. Yeah. That glove's got a little pocket in it. Yeah, you can put a little warmer in there or <laughs> something like that, you know. Do you, think they, call. do you think they've invented everything? They just come up with a little gadget. Oh, yeah, somebody's some always That's got cool. a good new idea. All right, uh, let's talk about the calls a little bit. This is a gobbler call. Right? This, this thing will, will make some noises here that uh, make the gobble call. That don't take a lot of skill. No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> And uh, in fact, most of these calls don't. We have some that's real simple. For instance, this little call right here is small, but all you got to do is... That's all you got to do. Wow. It's very simple and very little movement on it. Probably the number one call that people use is a box call. Mm -hmm. This is a, a hustling hen call by Billy White, one of the best ever made. And it's not hard to use. You just got to make a little cranking sound. And oh, it, it's yeah. not hard to use. It sounds good. And the good thing about a, a box call like that, it's loud and it'll carry a long way. I've called a turkey in and I know from a quarter mile off of that call. Are you serious? Get them started with that. The, the only hold back to this is you're moving a lot when you, and the turkey, if he's inside, mm -hmm. he's going to see it. So most people then will go to a, uh, a mouth call. Now this is a little bitty thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't. This is a new one. I don't know if it'll work or not, but I'll kind of show you. It fits in your mouth like this with the reeds out. It has mm -hmm. a little rubber reed in there. Fits in the top of your mouth, and you make a little chuck, chuck, chuck sound. How about that? It takes a little practice to learn to use that. My older brother, he he gags and chokes every time he sticks one in his <laughs> mouth. Uh, another call is a slate call. It's just a piece of slate or glass or aluminum, and you just make little, take this striker, just, mm -hmm. and it's not that hard to use, just takes a little practice. And that's most of the calls. Uh, some of the things you need is, if you're going to hunt, you're going to have to have a shotgun, you're going to have to have a good tight choke. A full choke will work, but they make all these really fancy uh, chokes for turkeys and you can try them and different ones work well in some guns so that just fits in there it just yeah. screws in the barrel okay and uh, it gives you a tight pattern you want a real tight pattern yeah and you, distance for turkeys is you know I like to get a turkey with 30 35 yards mm -hmm. but now Winchester's come out with a gun and some ammo that they uh, say will shoot will kill a turkey at 60 yards really yeah mm -hmm. and, um, and we carry that ammunition down there because it's it's a good thing. Sometimes you get you don't you can't get them in schools. They don't get, come yeah, out they there. They hang up. I, I've seen them just hang out there yeah, before. They, yeah, they, see, the normal know. procedure is for the hens to go to the gobblers, mm -hmm. not for him to come to you. Mm -hmm. But if you're lucky and uh, you can get him to come to you, and I've called him up, you know, within 10, 15 yards, you know. And, yeah. All right. Let's see what else we got here. You got to have, you got to locate a turkey if you get. In the woods, first thing normally you would do in the morning, and you need to go before daylight, mm -hmm. and I would recommend you carry a little light with you mm -hmm. just to look out, you know, watch the trail where you're walking. And uh, so at that time, this time of year now, the snakes come out. Yeah. And uh, I would recommend snake boots, and I think maybe next month we'll do a thing on snake boots. Okay. But anyway, you, gotta, you need to locate the turkeys in the morning. So you get in the woods before daylight, and uh, when it starts to break break daylight, you make some sounds, either with a crow call or an owl call. You make some sounds okay. like that. And a, and a turkey has a reaction to that. Normally, he will gobble. Mm -hmm. And then you can locate him. And then it's your job to get up close to him and set up and try to call him in, which is all the fun. And they don't like the owl either. They, they, they and the call. owl is the same thing. They will... Yeah. And they will react sometime. I've had them react to a car door slamming mm -hmm. or a gun going off a half mile off. They will gobble. Mm -hmm. Or one time a, a car, truck went across a bridge right close to me and it caused that turkey to gobble. And it's, a, it's just a reaction. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
thank goodness they do that or we never would kill one <laughs> with his eyes you know he's so he can see so well it's just mm -hmm. amazing all right let's see for the bow hunter they, we have a, a broadhead made specially to shoot turkeys. Cool. It's made to kill a turkey. It's got blades on it so that it, okay. will, it will put him down. You can see these are blades. There, are there. some guys using that now? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. We got, in fact, on the hunting channel the other day, there's a program on where these guys hunted turkeys, and they only shot them in the head with a bow. They didn't kill a lot of turkeys. <laughs> they went to win Dixie a lot for turkeys, <laughs> I can tell you that. Uh -huh. Another thing you got to have is you got to pattern your shotgun. And these are the, mm -hmm. these are turkey targets. They fold out, and you want to aim right below his about right, about right in here, right in here, so that you get a headshot. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to try for a headshot to make a, a very humane instant and kill. And that brings up a good point, especially if you hunt with young people too. A lot of times they're going to aim at the head, and a lot, if they, somebody's going to make miss a shot, a lot of times it goes high. Right. So aiming at the head, right. so you do want to aim below the head. Right. You know, that's Just a, good a little point. below and. Mm -hmm. And you should have a pattern of about that big that you want to hit with. Mm -hmm. uh, if you use a, you know, if you use an open choke, you're gonna have a pattern this big, which is no good. Yeah. You want to put some shot in that head, and that's instant kill, and that's the way we need to do it. Okay. All right. Let's take a. We're gonna take a final break and come right back. Okay. Now, right, welcome back. Glad you're with us this morning. Sitting with Ronnie Groom from CNG Sporting Goods. First, let's go about fishing game forecast today. If you're getting out outdoors, our we brought to you by Mark Coward of Edgewater Beach Realty. Mark's number is 832-6000. Our time, 11.08 to 1.08. Okay, right in the middle of the day and then tonight, uh, 11.29 to 1.29. That brings up a good point, Ronnie, about the times and all. Uh, it, it's hard to, to shoot a turkey in the middle of the day. I mean, yeah, it what? can be done, you know. Uh, usually they're killed early in the morning when you call them in right off the roost mm -hmm. before they get with some hens. Once they get up with a bunch of hens, it's hard to call one in. The best thing to do then is to call the hens in. Mm -hmm. And uh, one way to do that is to use a fighting call. Okay. We, make, we have a call that you twist and it makes sounds like turkeys fighting. And you know, everything comes to a fight, whether it's people, dogs, or whatever, they're going to come to a fight. <laughs> That's true. And if you call those hens in, get them in, and uh, get those gobblers wanting to come in there and fight, then it's a good chance to kill them. But normally you shoot them in the morning. And you got to get there plenty early and get set you gotta up. You got to get there before daylight. Yep. And they're going to gobble right at the break of day. So mm -hmm. you need to be there if you're going to find out where they are, you know. And you may be a quarter of a mile off where well, you got to jump in your vehicle and get as close as you can and mm -hmm. start all over again. So it's just a matter of staying with it. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, though, like up about eight or nine o'clock, if the gobbler's with a bunch of hens, and then uh, the hens will go off to nest and that gobbler's loose. So sometimes you can get them, you know, in the middle of the day or the afternoon even. So, you know, just whenever. You just mm -hmm. never know when you can come up on a turkey. That's what I was going to say. Uh, sometimes uh, I've heard of people hunting after lunch and all, going to have, oh, you know, yeah. have a late breakfast, go back to the woods. And yeah, that, go yeah. back. Yeah. yeah. You're not going to kill one unless you're in the woods, that's for sure. <laughs> all right, you got some uh, camo tape and all. Yeah, I mean, you know, this... Good. A lot of people uh, will camouflage their guns. Now, mm -hmm. most of the guns now that you buy for turkey hunting are already camouflage. And a lot of people use scopes now on guns mm -hmm. because you can narrow it down. Some of the guns, if you've got an older gun, it's only probably got a pin on the end of the barrel. Mm -hmm. That's not a very good aiming device. And most people tend to not get their gun barrel down level, you know. Mm -hmm. So you're going to shoot over them and under them and everywhere else. So, it, But if you, if you decide to... Uh, Camouflage your gun with some tape. You need to spray it good with WD-40 before mm -hmm. you put this tape on there, because that tape, if you leave it on there like a year or two, it's, gonna, it's there. Yeah, yeah. You will never it's get it off. Far. Now this right here, did we show that one right here? That's, that? that's that's a striker. Okay. That's yeah, a, that's a striker. Primo's makes that. That's a good right. brand. Yeah, that that's we use a, on the uh, slate calls. They make different strikers. Okay. And you can get different tones from that. You know, if you use a different type. But this, this is some kind of metal and they make them out of wood. This is three or four different kind of woods. And talk about mouth calls again just a second. That's probably the most popular call used beside the box. But you get these calls, you know, like get you two or three of them and you'll find all of them are a little bit different. And mm -hmm. you have to, I have to trim mine. This is too wide around here for mm -hmm. me. So I take the scissors and trim that tape off a little and I bend it a little bit so it fits in your mouth comfortable. Mm -hmm and get you a couple of them and you get different sounds. And a lot of times that's the way to, to draw in turkeys by making different turkey sounds. Make a yelp over here with one call and 
another call over here, use another call that sounds like a bunch of turkeys. And that is uh, conducive to calling in turkeys. And, and we talked about this before too. A lot of people over call. Right. And, and, uh, if he's coming, how do you, if he's coming, you know, let him come. You know, mm -hmm. if he hangs up, then you may need to scratch the dirt a little bit, like a turkey feeding. You know, make a few noises like that. Mm -hmm. Yelp, real, real, real small. You know, and uh, but don't don't be afraid to call. It, sometimes it takes a lot of calling. What I like to do is I listen to what it, when a turkey yelps back or makes a call back, I try to make the same call back mm -hmm. to him. And, okay, uh, let me ask you this. Do you do much uh, pre-season, like uh, you know, deer hunting all we do pre-season and all that. you do much of that in turkey hunting? you, you, you yeah. do a lot of stuff and sort of find out where they are? And, and now here's a good tip. A lot of people go out now, before the season, mm -hmm. and uh, listen and yelp to them and all that. Don't do that. They get call shy in a hurry. Mm -hmm. You you wait till he, you're ready to shoot him before you start using the call. Don't go out there and start calling now. Good point. Wait wait and let him, and use your call when it's when the season's in. So if you want to go out in the woods, just go and just listen. Don't be. Yeah, don't I be go calling. out and listen, yeah. and I also go in a couple good spots where I've killed turkeys before, and I put up a little blind, mm -hmm. you know, just a small one, and it, you don't you don't have to do that. A lot of times I'll run out and if I hear one and get close to him cut off some palmettas and just stick them in the ground in front mm -hmm. of me and lean up against the tree. Do you like those ground blinds? Too? Ground blinds are good, and the good thing about a ground blind, you know, when deer hunting, you need to put a ground blind up a week or two ahead mm -hmm. so deer get used to it. You can put a, a ground blind in the middle of a field and a turkey will come to it first day and stick his head in it. <laughs> you know, he's not real smart. Yeah, they cure something. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, we've got to wrap things up. you got all this stuff down at C&G Sporting Goods, and, and y'all are talking turkey. <laughs> we talk, talk turkey. We talk turkey. It gets noisy down there sometimes <laughs> this time of year. Yeah, you got people calling back and forth. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, I'll run out and see, see Ronnie. And, and uh, don't forget about this new uh, first annual wild turkey contest. That's a, that's a lot of fun. Free to enter. Just bring a picture, and uh, you're going to get some. We'll show those pictures, too, on Panhandle. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get them to you. All right, buddy. Thanks so much. Thank you, buddy. Enjoyed all right. it. All right. Folks, thank you all always for watching Panhandle Outdoors. We appreciate your viewership. Do something good for someone else today, and God bless. Amen. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.